You're wasting your life with those video games, he shouted from his easy chair as he watched TV. Now be quiet, I'm trying to watch this show. All right, so um, <laughs> a little bit of a hot take on Twitter that kind of blew up the other day with some people I know. Um, There's a tweet by a guy named uh, Alexander J.A. Cortez, and uh, what he said was, video games are the absolute worst loser habit you could have. Hours and hours spent on an ultimately useless skill, sitting and getting fatter and weaker and skinnier and paler. Completely impaired social skills. Video games make you a bottom tier subhuman. So I want to address this uh, from a little bit of a different angle. And I'm going to talk about three things. The first one is going to be the meta, the anti-fragile narrative. And the second one is going to be reactionary gamers. And the third thing I want to talk about is games as leisure and put all this stuff into context. So the first thing is this is a very inflammatory tweet. If you understand or you've been following me and you've heard me talk about this sort of thing, there is a power to negativity which creates an anti-fragile effect. If you say something that enrages people, they will actually spread the message for you and they will spread your brand for you as well. So saying something like this on Twitter, this is absolutely the way that you have to operate Twitter if you want to build a Twitter following and you want to get an audience because you have to think several chains down the line. If, if there's somebody that... Um, is five followers away like you know this person follows this person follows this person even if you get somebody who hates you that is responding to your tweet and wanting to argue with you then they're spreading your tweet to people who've never heard of you which has the potential to really help you grow on youtube really negative takes or really hot takes if something sucks something's bad this has a big anti-fragile potential as well i've noticed on my channels People come in and they're like, you hate every movie. I'm like, actually, I'd say most of my movie reviews are positive. The vast majority are positive. But it's the negative ones that get all the attention. If I say Star Wars sucks, I get 100,000 views on it. If I say this movie is good, I get like 2,000 views, right? There's a huge discrepancy there between the negativity. So if you are actually wanting to grow your brand on social media, you have to know how it works. And chances are you are going to gain a lot more attention with negativity than positivity, or rather it's easier to hit people's buttons and get them to spread your brand than it is to try to do something that's so virally positive that people will spread it anyway. Something like, you know, kitty and, and uh, kitty and duck gifs that get spread all over uh twitter so it's, it's all harder to actually do those than to put out a hot take like this now let me go ahead and respond to this as well because i am a gamer is this an untrue statement video games are the absolute worst loser habit you could have well the keyword there to me is actually habit now i will say that there's been a very very strong reaction from the gamers. This is part of the anti-fragile meta. And I understand why there's that strong reaction because gamers have basically been on the defensive always. Even before video games were big, you were trying to defend Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop RPGs, things which you do which are fun. And it seems like they're constantly under assault. D&D uh, &D was part of some satanic ring in the 80s or something like that which is of course nonsense likewise this idea that video games cause violence or cause lots of uh social problems uh, i think is also just bunk however uh you could see with the reaction to the world health organization talking about uh, say a gaming compulsion disorder like i think it's called a gaming disorder which is uh, an addiction or compulsion towards video games that the massive negative reaction like stay out of my hobby blah 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 people were kind of automatically having their emotional reaction to that without thinking about it video games can be addictive or can create compulsive behaviors in some people that doesn't mean that they are creating compulsive behaviors in you but the reaction that i see from gamers both from this tweet or things that are like it uh politicians talking about violent video games creating shooters or something like that their reaction is very very reminiscent of a different group to me and that is potheads these are people who smoke marijuana all the time people who use large amounts of cannabis i'm not talking about people who um, who smoke pot on you know a couple weekends a month or something like that same as people who like drink a couple weekends a month that's not 
Um, that's not what I'm talking about. But when somebody says, hey, you know, uh, habitual marijuana use looks like it changes the map of your brain and your brain looks like a schizophrenic person. What you get is a huge amount of pushback uh, to that. You get people uh, attacking your character. You get people to get very riled up. And one of the first things that I notice is that potheads will tell you how non-addictive marijuana is. Meanwhile, they've been smoking three to four times a day for years and years. So they have a habit. So the habit is something that exists whether or not you're looking at marijuana as some sort of physiologically addictive substance if such a thing actually exists i think the more modern approach is to look at addiction as a set of behaviors and compulsions and things like that rather than looking at it as like this you know this substance mimics some other substance in your body and when you take it out then you suffer withdrawals um i think addiction has a little bit broader definition is really looked at uh, now in mental health circles as a set of behaviors so the person who is telling you that marijuana is non-habit forming and yet they have a a habit of it that they could never possibly let go of tells you what you need to know that is a psychological defense mechanism so when i see Gamers getting very, very upset about tweets like this rather than saying like, well, you don't have to play games. I play games. They get uh, defensive because they may actually have a problem or they may actually have an unhealthy relationship with games. And that's a psychological defense mechanism. You don't want people to tell you that you have a problem because that requires you to acknowledge that something has to be altered. Now, keep in mind this guy, um, Alexander J. A. Cortez, he's a friend of a friend, by the way. So I am somewhat biased, but he's a he's a fitness guy. Right, And so fitness guys, of course, are going to want to motivate you to work out, to improve your body and improve yourself. That's all part of his brand. He has a a pro-masculine brand and a pro-fitness brand. However, there's problems with fitness as well. So let's talk about the third thing I want to talk about, which is actually games as leisure and the idea of habits and leisure. Because fitness is something that is good for you, right? Going to the gym and lifting weights, it's good for you. It uh, creates an anti-fragile effect in your body. Your body responds to that stress by making itself stronger, more prepared for the next heavier weight. Um, it makes you look better. All of these things come with uh, come with working out and stressing your body. So it, it doesn't make sense, right? Like, can you have too much fitness? And the answer is definitely you can. And I'm not talking about overtraining here. This is a one of those gym myths that gets flown around that people are are overtraining themselves and getting smaller. I think it's actually pretty hard to do that uh, for most people. But what I think of is that you have a big fitness industry on YouTube, elsewhere, that focuses on this aesthetic appeal of maximizing muscle mass and things like that. And so what people are doing in order to achieve that is they are loading their body up with drugs. Uh, steroids of various kinds, um, and they're using additional drugs, you know, stimulants to try to cut fat, or uh, in some cases like opioid type substances while they work out. It's pretty extreme what bodybuilders do in order to achieve the aesthetic that you view as this encapsulation of strength and masculinity. And of course, those drugs have a negative effect. So while you are getting bigger and stronger, you're also destroying your heart. Um, I think it's almost two years ago now, Dallas McCarver died of a heart attack. He was less than 30. He was an up-and-coming bodybuilder, and a lot of people had big reactions to it, but most of the reactions I saw were a strong defense of bodybuilding, either as a lifestyle or as part of fitness, and they either ignored the drugs or in some cases defended drug use, saying that Dallas McCarver, due to his heart defects or whatever was genetically wrong with him died not because of his massive massive use of steroids but because he used steroids and already had a predisposition towards dying and that is probably true actually on some level however you cannot deny that the steroids actually contributed to his death in a significant way he had an enlarged heart uh, a heart that was uh, like you know was, i'm trying to remember how big it was like two to three times larger than a normal heart um and that's the result of you know putting uh, growth hormone and uh, you know all the various anabolic steroids that you put in your body in order to achieve that. Um, I'm not like an expert on taking steroids, but usually you're doing a couple stacks. Now the moderate thing there, like so, you look at this image of fitness and you're like, oh yeah, that's that's 
healthy. But bodybuilders are actually some of the least healthy people that you can see involved in athletics because of the drug use. Uh, using diuretics in order to get prepped for shows causes kidney failure. I remember Nasser El Sonbadi, who was a very big bodybuilder in the 90s, and I'm a fan of the, of the sport on some level. Uh, he died of kidney failure. So you have to acknowledge that although somebody may look a certain way, that freakish big bodybuilder is suffering health consequences. He's not living a healthy life, even though his exterior may look like some sort of extreme version of fitness, um, that that's not really the case. And likewise, just like with anything else, a dude going to the gym and working out is not hurting himself. Now, he might risk injury, but you know, you're not... You're not doing damage to your body by by stressing it and exercising. You're making yourself stronger, and even like a gym rat who maybe does a couple of couple of cycles a year with like a moderate stack of like two, two to three drugs is probably not uh, going to be suffering as big a long term health consequence as these bodybuilders. But that doesn't mean that there's no health consequence to using steroids. Um, so from the fitness industry, there's often a bit of a bit of you know, talking on both sides of people's mouths. And I, I don't believe Cortez uses uh, steroids. Um, he looks like he has a, what I would consider a natural body that just happens to be very well built. Um, and he's never advocated use of drugs or anything like that. But you have a lot of other fitness personalities that kind of talk out of both sides of their mouth. It's all about health. It's all about great diet. And yeah, you can have a great diet with perfect macros and eating tons, tons of vegetables, but you're popping Trembolone and Winstrol and who knows what else into your body to get that look. And that is breaking down your insides. So you have to be aware of that. Now, gaming as a leisure thing, this is something that I really want to get to. Because for most people who are gamers or who enjoy gaming, this is a leisure activity. This is something you do with your free time, not something you do, hopefully, as a substitute for something else you ought to be doing. And that, to me, is when you know that you are really developing a habit that is unhealthy, is that if you are doing something like if you're playing a game instead of doing the work that you know that you were supposed to be doing, whether it's you know working on a creative project or, or maintaining your health, going to the gym, that's when that is probably encroaching upon your life. Now, you could actually see this with anything. I, you know, the To me, it's a big boomer take to talk about how bad video games are for you because baby boomers will tell you that video games are bad and, and you're wasting your life while they watch you know, three to four hours of TV every single day, which is actually worse because it. Uh, I, I, I remember a study from many years ago. It's probably not true, but I'll use it anyway. It's that you burn more calories staring at the wall than you do watching TV because staring at the wall, you actually start to engage your brain. Well, gaming, you're probably going to burn more calories than actually staring at the TV. So uh, one must be aware that you must remove the splinters from your own or the logs from your own eyes before you remove the splinters from others. Uh, and I always thought it was just kind of a cross-generational thing is that boomers really like to watch TV and waste their leisure time that way or, and then have a negative judgment towards people spending their leisure time in some other way that is not any more or less productive than watching TV or even reading books, right? You know, sitting around reading fiction hits all of these tick marks too. Hours and hours spent on an ultimately useless skill, sitting and getting fatter and weaker and skinnier and paler, completely impaired social skills. Fiction books make you a bottom tier subhuman. In fact, I think Razorfist tweeted that out exactly, but um, I don't know if he used those exact words, but I'll, I'll give him credit for that because I think I saw him do something like that. Uh, so, uh, credit where credit's due with that. But you could say that for books. You could say that for, you know, anything. Playing with Legos, right? What's the skill of playing with Legos? Now, on a broader term, I could probably say that there's some, you know, some help when kids play with Legos. It maybe improves their mind a little bit. But, you know, video games might do some of the same stuff. So you have to be aware that we're talking about leisure. And the key to to me, the key to this tweet is that it's a, it's a loser habit. So if you are doing... Uh, video games instead of you know if you're skipping your gym day to play video games every day eventually you just don't go to the gym you're just playing video games instead of instead of maintaining your health if you're playing video games instead of working on your book then you know that's not good either you're you're not working towards your goals so whenever the goals are being impaired by something that's when it's a problem and you could have it with the gym too um 
I've known women that broke up with men because they spent too much time at the gym. And some people who are big into fitness are going to have a big negative reaction. Like, Screw her and this and that. But it's like if you're spending uh, 20 hours a week at the gym, that leaves a, not a lot of time for social time. You're not really socializing at the gym either. So people are so focused on trying to get the body that they want that they're not spending any time in their body with other human beings, that's a possibility too. So if people are so focused on their exterior and things like that that they, you know, they won't, they won't skip their gym class to have dinner with their girlfriend sometime or something like that. Then yeah, it can be that can be impairing you as well. Uh, but most people who I think who are generally normal dudes that are into fitness who aren't the big bodybuilders, they're not sacrificing their social life. You know, it's like oh well, yeah. Maybe I'll not go to the gym Friday night and I'll go on a date instead. That's not bad for you either. I'll just go to the gym on Saturday or put it in a different time slot, you know. So anyway, that's my point is that for those of us who enjoy games, myself included, it's a leisure activity. And in fact, this will be the last point. Maybe this is point number four. I think people need leisure. They need relaxation. They need enjoyable things that they do in their life rather than having a life that's completely dedicated towards self-improvement. Eventually, you want to reap the rewards of your work, and that includes rest and relaxation. And for me, rest and relaxation is not going to the beach, and it's not going on travels and things like that, which a lot of people find relaxing. I don't find vacations relaxing. To me, my idea of a vacation is like cracking out on a JRPG for a week. Uh, But I'm only going to do that if I've earned that vacation, if I've earned that rest time. And I found for me, like for me to maintain my happiness and sanity i need to have something that i do for a leisure time and for me games are it i really enjoy it uh, likewise reading is is a leisure activity so mostly reading in games is is what i do and so when i'm done with my day of work when i'm done with everything my whole family's asleep i'm always the last one to bed um i'll play a game for a few minutes either you know on the tv um or you know on my pc or i'll read for a while and then i'll go to sleep um so i always put my leisure time at the end of the day to unwind, to do something that's enjoyable for itself, uh, that's a leisure time that's enjoyable for itself and uh, isn't contributing to something else in some way. And then I uh, I go to sleep. And I found if I try to cut that out, um, I get too stressed. It's, it's too much stress to never have anything fun in your life. So games can be part of that. Lots of things can be that. It just depends on who you are. But games by themselves don't represent something that is uh, bad in itself. It's only bad in the context of if you're doing it instead of doing something else. Um, There's a reason games are fun. They're fun in and of themselves, just like a lot of things like reading books. So thanks so much for listening to this little lecture here for you. And uh, leave me your comments and thoughts down below as to this this particular take. And I'll see you guys next time. Of course, remember, you can get all my books on Amazon. Uh, Water of Awakening, you actually can get this book for free right now if you join my mailing list. And Voices of the Void is the newest one. I don't know where the book is. It's over there somewhere. Uh, so check that one out. It's 99 cents on Amazon and people seem to really like that one. So I'll see you guys next time.